Hello and welcome to another video on changing the subject of a formula and in this video we're going to take a look at some more complicated questions where we've got more than one instance of the variable in our equation. So this is going to be a higher tier GCSE topic roughly about the grade 7 to 9 level. So I'm going to go through a example with you first and then I'm going to give you some questions to have a go at. Now, on the right hand side here, I've got a guide that I like to use whenever I'm rearranging formulae. So all questions are obviously different, but generally they follow the same sequence of events. So as I'm going through my workings, I'm just going to refer to these steps that I take. So here it says rearrange the formula to make X the subject. So whenever we're rearranging formulae and changing the subject, our final answer should say X equals. So there should only be one instance of the variable in our final answer. And at the moment, you can see that we've got X in the numerator and in the denominator. So we're going to have to do a bit of manipulation first. So the first thing I like to do is to deal with any fractions. So at the moment, we can see that we've got X minus 8 in our denominator. I want to get rid of that. So to get rid of this in our denominator, well, I need to multiply this fraction by X minus 8. So if I multiply it by X minus 8, Obviously, I can't just do that to one side of my equation. I need to do that to the other side as well. So I'm going to multiply the left hand side by X minus eight. So on the left hand side, well, I've got Y times X minus eight. I could expand this all in one go, but I'm going to do it in separate steps just to keep things simple. And then on the right hand side, well, these two terms will just cancel. So all we're left with is X plus three. So now you can see that I've dealt with all my fractions. I don't have any fractions now left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tick step number one to say we've done that. Now, step number two, deal with any brackets. So you won't always have brackets, but you can see in this situation, I have got a pair of brackets. So I'm going to expand these brackets. So y multiplied by x, well, that's just yx or xy. I always like to do things in alphabetical order. And then y times negative 8, well, that's negative 8y. So I've expanded my brackets. So let me just copy this out. So on the right-hand side, we've just got x plus 3. So again, I'm just going to tick step number 2. Now, step number 3, we need to rearrange. Now, remember, we want x on its own. So we need to put all of the x's on one side of the equation. So I think I'm going to put them all on the left hand side. You could put them all on the right hand side, but I'm going to put them on the left hand side. So I'm going to get rid of this x. So if I subtract x from the right, obviously I need to subtract x from the left. So now on the left hand side, I'm left with xy minus x. And then we've still got that minus 8y. And then on the right hand side, because these terms just cancel, all we're left with is 3. So we're almost done with rearranging. We just need to get rid of this negative 8y because we just want x's on the left. So I'm going to add 8y to both sides. So add 8y to the left, add 8y to the right. And now what we're left with, we've got xy minus x. And then obviously these terms cancel. And then on the right hand side, we've just got 3 plus 8y. OK, now we're done with rearranging because we've just got x's on the left hand side. So the next step is to factorize. So you can see that at the moment we've got two instances of x. So the whole reason why we factorize is just to get one instance of x. So what we can do is we can factor out an x from this expression. So I'm just going to come up here. So if we factor out an x from our expression, what are we left with? Well, xy divided by x, well, that's just y. And then we've got minus x divided by x. Well, that's just one. So this is what we're left with. And you can check this. If you wanted to expand these brackets, you should be left with this expression here. And then on the right hand side, well, we've just got three plus eight y. So now you can see we've gone from two instances of x to one x. So that's the whole reason why we factorize. So let me tick that one. And then finally, we want to get x on its own. So we need to divide. So to, we need to get rid of this y minus 1. So we can divide by y minus 1. And obviously, we need to do that to both sides of our equation. So what we're left with is we deserve a bit of a drum roll here. So on the left-hand side, we've just got x because these terms cancel. 
and then on the right hand side well I'm just going to copy all of this out so this here is my final answer and you can see that I have made X a subject so let me just tick off that last step just to show that we've done all five so you won't always need to do all five of these you might not have any brackets in your equation or any fractions or sometimes you might not even need to factorize but I like to follow this as sort of a general guide when I'm doing these sort of questions. So I'm going to give you a few questions to have a go at now. OK, so here's question one. Rearrange the formula to make Y the subject. So pause the video and see if you can have a go at doing this question. And remember, try to follow these steps over here. OK, so let's go through this together now. So first of all, deal with any fractions. Well, there's no fractions in this formula, so we can just tick that one off straight away. We don't need to deal with that one. Now, have we got any brackets? Yes, we do. So let's expand these brackets here. So first of all, I'm just going to write out the left hand side. So we've got y plus 3. And then on the right hand side, well, x times y, well, that is xy. And then plus x times 2, or well, that is 2x. So now we have expanded all of the brackets. There's no more brackets left. So now we need to rearrange. And for this, we need to get all of the y's on one side. So I think I'm going to get them on the left hand side. So I'm going to get rid of this x, y term. So I'm going to subtract x, y from the left. And obviously I'm going to subtract x, y from the right. And I've just remembered or realized I've said those right and lefts the wrong way around. But hopefully you understand what I'm on about. So on the left hand side, we've got y minus x, y. And then plus 3. And then on the right hand side, these two terms cancel. So we're just left with 2x. OK, we've almost got the y's on their own. We just need to get rid of this 3. So if we subtract 3 from the left, we need to subtract 3 from the right. So now we're left with y plus, or not plus, y minus xy. Those 3's cancel. And then on the right hand side, we've just got 2x minus 3. So now we have the y's on the left hand side. We don't need to do any more rearranging, but we do need to factorize because we've got two instances of y. We just want one y. So we can factor out a y. We factor out a y. Well, y divided by y is just 1. And then if we subtract and then xy divided by y, that's just x. And again, you can always check this by expanding your brackets. And then I'm just going to copy this out. So we've got 2x minus 3 on the right hand side. So let's just tick the fact that we've done factorizing. And now our final step to get y on its own, we need to divide by 1 minus x. So divide by 1 minus x. Let's do the same to the right hand side. Divide by 1 minus x. So I just come over here. Our final answer, these two terms will cancel. So we'll just be left with y. And then on the right hand side, I can just copy all of this out over here. So this here is my final answer. So hopefully you got this. But if not, I've got a few more questions to have a go at. So question number two, rearrange the formula to make W the subject. So as you can see, we have a fraction with W in. We need to get rid of that fraction. So to do that, we need to multiply it by this expression. So if I multiply the right hand side by W minus five, that will get rid of this fraction. Obviously, I need to do the same thing to the left hand side. So on the left hand side, we've got G multiplied by W minus five. I will expand that a bit later. And then on the right hand side, these two terms just cancel. So we're just left with W. So we have dealt with the fraction. Now let's expand the brackets. So now we've got G multiplied by W minus five. So G times W is GW. And then g times negative 5 is negative 5g. And then we've just got that w on the right hand side. So now we don't have any brackets. We can rearrange the formula. So we want all of the w's on one side of our equation. Again, it doesn't matter which side we put them in, put them on. I'm going to put them on the left hand side. So I'm going to get rid of this w. So if I subtract w from the right, I'm going to subtract w from the left. So we've got gw minus w. We've still got this negative 5g there. And then on the right hand side, w minus w, well, that's just zero. So almost done. We just need to get rid of this negative 5g. So if we add 5g to the left, add 5g to the right. So now we're left with gw minus w. These two terms cancel. 
And then on the right hand side, we've just got this 5G. So now we do have all of the W's on one side of our equation. So we've rearranged our equation. And now at the moment, we've got two W's. We need one W. So we need to factorize. So let's factor out a W from our expression. And we're going to be left with, in our brackets, we're going to be left with g minus 1. And again, if you wanted to check this, just expand the brackets. And then on the right hand side, well, we're just left with 5g. So we're almost done. We have factorized. We need to get w on its own. At the moment, we've got this expression multiplied onto it. So to get rid of this expression, we just need to divide by it. So if I divide the left hand side by g minus 1, that will get rid of this expression obviously i need to do the same to the right hand side divide by g minus one so let me just come up here so on the left hand side you can see we'll just be left with w and then on the right hand side well we've got this whole expression 5g all of that over g minus one and this here is my final answer so let me just tick that last step that we did so on the left hand side we've got 3cp plus 2y and then on the right hand side these two terms cancel so we're just left with 2c so we've got the y's on the left hand side let's get rid of this 3cp now so we're just left with y so what we can do is we can subtract 3cp from the left and subtract 3cp from the right so now we're just left with 2y and that's going to equal 2c minus 3cp Okay, last step, we've done the rearranging. Notice we don't need to factorize. The reason we don't need to factorize is because we've only got one instance of y. So this question, there was only one y uh, to begin with in the question. So we can just tick that anyway, just to say that, you know, we don't, well, we're on to the next stage of dividing because we want to get y on its own. So we need to divide by two. So divide the left hand side by two, divide the right hand side by two. So let's come up here. Our final answer, we're just going to have y, which is what we want. And then that's going to equal 2c minus 3cp, all of that over 2. And we can't simplify this anymore. Although 2 divides by 2, 3 doesn't divide by 2. So this will be our final answer. So let me just tick that last step there. So I've got one last question for you to have a go at. And here it is. And it's a right stinker because we need to rearrange the formula to make x the subject. And notice we've got x in four different places in our formula. So this is going to be a very challenging question, this one. So pause the video, have a go at doing this yourself first. OK, let's go through this together. So first of all, let's deal with any fractions. And you can see we've got two fractions here. So let's first of all get rid of this 3x. So... At the moment, we're dividing by 3x. So to get rid of this fraction, we need to multiply by 3x. So if I multiply this fraction by 3x, I obviously need to multiply this term by 3x. And I need to multiply this term by 3x. So I need to mul pl multiply everything by 3x. So on the left hand side, well, 3x times c, well, that's just going to be 3cx or 3xc. It doesn't matter which way. And then on the right hand side, well, this here, the 3x's are just going to cancel. So we'll just be left with 7x minus 2 plus, And then over here, well, the x's will cancel. So we'll just be left with 3 times 5 plus x. Hopefully you can see that over here. 3x divided by x. Well, that's just 3. And then we're multiplying by this expression over here. There are a couple of ways you could do this, but this is just the way that I've chosen to do it. So we now have dealt with all of the fractions. So let's tick that. And now let's deal with any brackets. So you can see here, we just need to expand this bracket. So first of all, I'm just going to copy out all of this. And now 3 times 5, well, that will give me 15. And then 3 times x, that will give me plus 3x. So now I've dealt with all of my brackets, so I can tick that step off. Now we just need to rearrange the formula so we get all of the x's on one side of our equation. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the x's on the left hand side and leave the numbers on the right hand side. So let's get rid of this 7x. So subtract 7x from the right and subtract 7x from the left. And also in the same step, I'm just going to get rid of this 3x as well. So if I subtract 3x from the right, 
I need to subtract 3x from the left. So let's see what we're left with. On the left hand side, we've got 3cx and then minus 7x minus 3x. Well, that's just minus 10x. And then on the right hand side, we've got fifth we've got minus 2 plus 15 or just 15 minus 2 or well, that's just 13 okay now we've rearranged because we've got all of the x's together but we do need to factorize because we've still got two instances of x we can't sort of merge these together so what we're going to have to do is factorize so if i factor out an x factor out an x well we're going to be left with 3c minus 10 and then on the right, well, we've just got 13. So we're almost done. We just need to get x on its own. So I can do that. I can just divide by this whole expression here, 3c minus 10. Notice when I do that, I'll just be left with x. Obviously, I need to do that to both sides. So divide by 3c minus 10. So again, let's bring it up here. So I'm going to be left with x on the left-hand side, and that's going to equal 13 all of that over 3c minus 10. So this here is my final answer. And I've just noticed I forgot to tick these last two steps off. So hopefully this video is helpful in helping you rearrange formulae where you've got the variable in more than one location in your formula. So I always like to follow these five steps. Again, like I said before, you don't need to do every single one. There might be some questions where there are no brackets or no fractions involved, but I like to use this just as a guide to help me. So if you do have any questions, please, please post them in the comment section. And if you do want any more questions to have a go at on this topic, please let me know and I'll do another video. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.